stand. Here we are. Not in the man cave, as I promised. Uh, upstairs. It is raining. I'm in charge of the cats today. <sighs> cats don't like rain. <clears throat> so, I just want to do a little video today on... It's a, it's a very... It's not um, the type of video I should really do. Ten minutes of me skirting through a subject. It is quite a complicated operation I'm going to talk about. Certain aspects of it. It's probably one of the ones that if you didn't know about it already, or you must have, if you're into collecting like me, you, you'll have heard about it, but maybe you did or you didn't know about it. So, the Channel Dash in 90, February 1942. So, basically, uh, the German capital ships, the 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 battleships in Gneisenau and Scharnhorst, and the heavy cruiser Prince Eugen were holed up in France, and. Basically, they were getting plastered by the RAF, uh, the, the Allies. So, to cut a long story short, Hitler's idea was that they would be returned to the northern ports in Germany, maybe as a, a way of thwarting any attempt to invade Norway. It will be away from the RAF, etc., etc. Uh, easy to defend. And uh, the, the admirals wanted to go the long way around. Hitler favoured... Channel Dash, which is going up the middle, surprise, uh, Operation Cerebus. So, it, it, went ahead, it went ahead, the British called their response to it Operation Fuller. Now, again, this is a very complicated subject, and the British one, the British side of it was marred by indecision, uh, bad luck, uh, um, hurried hurried and uncoordinated uh, orders and a look, look on the German side. So, I mean, the Germans actually made it. So one of the individual actions, I don't want to cover the whole thing because there was uh, the Luftwaffe were involved, Adolf, Adolf Galland, uh, giving them air cover, the RAF were involved, the fleet air arm, British Navy, and there were actions involving motor torpedo votes from the British Navy. I'm not going to go into that now. But I'm basically going to talk about uh, one particular person, but his actions... Uh, Lieutenant Commander Eugene Esmond, Irish descent, he was born in Yorkshire, and he won the posthumous VC on the 12th of February 1942. And a brief uh, thing about him, he joined the RAF in 1928, then went into the Fleet Air Arm, then left the Armed Forces, went on to the Imperial Airways, and back into the Fleet Air Arm uh, to time to start the war. He led eight. 2-5 Naval Air Squadron, Ferry Swordfish, same as the uh, die-cast model there, against the Bismarck. And he was decorated on the 11th of February, 42, for his for his actions in that. And he, uh, I mean, this is the day before, the day before he died. Um, his body was washed up seven weeks later, still in his life jacket, uh, near the River Medway, and he's buried in Woodlands Cemetery. So... I mean, what, what basically happened, I mean, I'll, I'll take a look at the model. So those of you who don't know what a fairy swordfish is, this is one here. And it's, a, it's an archaic biplane, nickname was the string bag. But they were effective in damaging the um, the Bismarck and crippling its, its steering mechanism, which enabled the British to sink the, um, sink the ship in the end. Uh, they also sank part of the Italian fleet in Taranto, to the back of my mind. But these things could take a lot of punishment simply because, I mean, something, a shell goes through them. It's all just, it's like dope, is it dope material? So there's not a lot to them. This model in particular here, it has a replacement fuel tank where there should be a third member of the crew. The ones that went into action in the Channel Dash had a pilot, uh, an observer, rear gunner, radio operator. So they had three in there. But I mean, this is just a representation of it. Um, fairy swordfish. 821 Squadron HMS Ark Royal 1940. So these couple of pamphlets here I got in a job lot uh, that do with the obviously the centenary of the Victoria Cross in uh, 1956. So I will just jog onto this little book here that I'd read, Fiasco, and just read a little bit of the, bit of the action. That um, I mean I, I did read in the book that Esmond. Um, they were given his orders and they realised they did I don't really realise they didn't have air cover there was something not quite right and basically they said to him it's up to you it's up to you whether you want to go no one will, no one will uh, say he didn't, have, he didn't have to do it and he, he went so I mean that's 
So Esmond led his squadron over the destroyers while his gunner Clinton fired his machine gun at the diving Luftwaffe planes. Tracers from destroyers and e-boats smacked into his cockpit. As more FW-190s dived onto the swordfish, cannon shells smashed big holes in their canvas fuselage. It was miraculous they were still flying. Tracer set fire to Esmond's tailplane and rear gunner Clinton climbed out of his cockpit and sat astride the fuselage, beating out the flames with his hands. When he clambered back, they were over the outer screen and the Germans, German battleship's main 11-inch guns came into action, belching smoke and flame. They laid down a barrage which sent spray crashing into the low-flying, now limping aircraft. One shell burst in front of Esmond and shot away his lower wing. His swordfish shuddered and dipped but still flew. With blood, blood, blood pouring from wounds in his head and back, Esmond hung on to the controls while his course steady for Prince Eugen. Behind him lay Williams and Clinton. Both were dead. In a last desperate attempt, effort, he pulled the swordfish's nose up into the wind for the last time and released his torpedo. Then there was a red flash as a direct hit from the German's guns blew his plane to pieces. As Esmond's swordfish crashed into the sea, German lookouts reported the track of his approaching torpedo. Captain Brinkman ordered port 15. As Esmond died, Prince Eugen dodged his torpedo easily. Um, this is uh, in, in this book here. There is an oil painting. Uh, sorry, it's this one. It's this one. Nearly getting professional there. Careful, Stan. There's an oil painting. I will. There we go. There's an oil painting. Swordfish attacking Scharnhorst and the Gneisenau, 12th of February 1942 by Norman Wilkinson. So we'll just leave that on there with our little swordfish model to represent. And we'll read from uh, this this book. Again, this is just a um, account of the action. On the morning of Thursday, the 12th of February 1942, Lieutenant Commander Esmond, in command of a squadron of the Fleet Air Arm, was told that the German battlecruisers Scharnhorst and Gneisenau and the Prince Eugen, strongly escorted by some 30 surface craft. You just stay there, boy. That's not in the, in the thing. I'd say I'm just watching this cat. Surface craft were entering the Strait of Dover and that his squadron must attack before they reached the sandbanks northeast of Calais. Le Lieutenant Commander... Oh, that cat. Do you mind? Just leave it alone. You stay there. You stay there, mate. Lieutenant Commander Esmond knew well that his enterprise was desperate. Soon after noon, he and his squadron of six swordfish set course for the enemy and after ten minutes' flight were attacked by a strong force of enemy fighters. Touch was lost with his fighter escort and the action which followed all his aircraft were damaged. He flew on, cool and resolute, serenely challenging hopeless odds to encounter the deadly fire of the battle cruisers and their escort, which shattered the port wing of his aircraft. Undismayed, he led his squadron on, straight through his infer this inferno on fire in a steady flight towards their target. Almost at once he was shot down, but his squadron went on to launch a gallant attack, which at least one torpedo was believed to have struck the German battle cruisers, and from which none of the six aircraft returned. His high courage and splendid resolution will live in the tradition of the Royal Navy and remain for many generations a fine and stirring memory. Uh, the, the, all the all the swordfish did get shot down. There were only five um, surviving crew members, uh, four which were officers, and they were ordered, uh, awarded the the DCS order, Singer Service Order. The enlisted man who survived was awarded the conspicuous cons, conspicuous. I can't say it. Gallantry medal, conspicuous gallantry medal. They both made. So th there's just a little bit of a. A brief history of that action and obviously it's not it's not complete sorry about the cat but and it, it just makes me think that i, I didn't know I, i've seen his medals his medals are in the imperial war museum but i haven't i've seen them because i know i've been in the Imper in the imperial war museum where all the vcs are but i didn't make that connection because i've never read directly about the channel dash so it's it's worth it's worth reading about if you've never uh, you've never actually studied it. I studied it. Just read read about it, and uh, I'm I'm always one myself for saying they don't make them like that anymore. I always say it, don't I? I said it in the video the other day. I don't know. I think that maybe people, if people are tested, um, they could end up doing something like that. You know, a brave, selfless action. Um, just in this day and age, people don't get tested as much. Do they? I mean, that's that, that's simply it. Um, so yeah, 
Uh, so if you do get a chance to uh, read the account of the Channel Dash and uh, the brave men who launched a semi-suicidal uh, attack on those German um, German surface ships, but yeah. So that's Stan. Serious video for once. Uh, I think I think these cats want feeding. This is Stan. I'll see you.